tell you what, President Trump should ask Secretary Pompeo and Attorney General Barr what the heck they're doing that they were protecting Hillary Clinton like this. To me, it's a, it's a real, it's a terrible betrayal of those who thought uh, that uh, President Trump's appointees would be doing the right thing here, because they haven't. I generally like Attorney General Barr, but on this, he's been AWOL. Secretary Pompeo, they know, they've known about these gamesmanship that his agency's played. They're still defending her. To this day, Justice Department attorneys are colluding with Hillary Clinton's attorneys. To this day. Uh, speaking of no justice, we had some bad news out of the uh, circuit court today. Uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals granted Hillary Clinton's mandamus and is now preventing her, her, their order prevents her from being deposed by judicial watch in person. So now she doesn't have to testify under oath and in person to, to, to judicial watch as ordered by federal court about her emails and Benghazi attack records. Now, you may recall, I thought things would not go well after the appellate court hearing. The judges were very skeptical of this issue. And, uh, you know, I went through the decision. Uh, we're obviously disappointed. Our lawyers are analyzing the decision and trying to figure out what our options are and what should we do next. Obviously, the options are, A, we can do nothing. We can appeal to the full back panel, the full uh, circuit, which would be an en banc uh, panel. Or we could go straight potentially to the Supreme Court. So I don't, I'm not sure what, if anything, we're going to do. But I do know this decision seems political. Hillary Clinton is getting special treatment from the court. Uh, the judge who wrote the case wanted to protect Judge Sullivan from a mandamus petition by General Flynn, but is giving Hillary Clinton unprecedented protection, along with two other judges, to be fair from being questioned in discovery. And let's go back to what went on here. She took, she, she conducted all of her government business on a private email system that was hidden from the American people, hidden from Judicial Watch, hidden from the court. State Department knew what was going on. She's the head of the agency. So as the head of the agency, she knew what was going on. And if she knows what's going on, that means the agency knows what's going on. And rather than tell us about it, when we do a FOIA request and lawsuit about it, in this case tied to Benghazi, they don't tell us about it and try to get us to shut the court case down and try to get the court to shut it down. And needless to say, the court's upset. He wants to know why he was being gamed. And she takes her emails, steals them in my view, deletes half of them, otherwise hides them, and we're all supposed to be happy with that. As Judge Sullivan said, the reason we're here is because of Mrs. Clinton. That one government employee, I think the language was he used. And to see the, this appellate court give her, once again, special treatment is just beyond the pale. It undermines confidence, in the, again, in the judiciary, the fair administration of justice. I mean, compare and contrast the agony I described with the appellate court, the full court being hesitant to grant a mandamus against General Flynn, who in unprecedented fashion is having a motion to dismiss his criminal charges denied. Never happened before in American history, practically speaking. And in this case, Hillary Clinton, it's just, there's a simple deposition issue. And she's given, the court has essentially ruled she has an indisputable right to the relief she got. Indisputable. For me to describe it shows you how difficult it is and how extraordinary that type of relief is. So it's terribly disappointing. I mean, I guess it's not surprising, but it's still disappointing because, you know, I don't know about you. I think the judges still need to do the right thing, even when it's hard. And so when I see judges do the wrong thing, it's disappointing. I know that's why the cookie crumbles sometimes, but you know, it's, it's still not acceptable. 
And what's equally, if not more outrageous, is to see the obstruction and efforts by the State Department and the Justice Department under the Trump administration being used against us. Throughout this decision, they say the State Department did this, and you know they were fighting us tooth and nail. And all those arguments that they were throwing out at us, and sometimes getting the courts to agree with, were, was, were used against us to stop Hillary Clinton's testimony. I tell you what, President Trump should ask Secretary Pompeo and Attorney General Barr what the heck they're doing that they were protecting Hillary Clinton like this. To me, it's a, it's a real, it's a terrible betrayal of those who thought uh, that uh, President Trump's appointees would be doing the right thing here, because they haven't. I generally like Attorney General Barr, but on this, he's been AWOL. Secretary Pompeo, they, they've known about these gamesmanship that his agency's played. They're still defending her. To this day, Justice Department attorneys are colluding with Hillary Clinton's attorneys. To this day. Now, I know it's probably frustrating to you and it's probably not surprising to you that she won't get, she won't testify, at least as of now. And you think, well, that, you know, it's frustrating she hasn't been held accountable. First of all, the statute of limitations hasn't passed. So I think you should let the White House know what you think about that. Let the Attorney General know what you think about that. Why aren't they prosecuting her over this? It was obviously the last time they looked at this issue, it was corrupted. The same gang that's now been implicated in crimes today, they were looking at Hillary Clinton. And of course, she's not president of the United States, and it's because of this email scandal. We didn't do it to make sure she wasn't president, but the consequence of our uncovering it is that she isn't president. So there's been rough justice. But specifically here, there was a miscarriage of justice. So I'll let you know what we do on this case as, as uh, time progresses, but um, I, don't, I don't know how much time we have to figure out whether we're going to appeal it or how we're going to appeal it, uh, but we're analyzing it carefully. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to catch all the latest news from Judicial Watch.